<laughs> in this episode of Lift Arc Builds, we build some 1400s inspired chandeliers from metal. Oh. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's probably a good sign. A lot of off gas, a lot of bubbles. I'm gonna not stand too close to that, but you can hear it. I'm hoping this is gonna work. Look at all this smoke. I moved it out in the driveway because uh, apparently this stuff kills grass really fast. Who'd have thunk it? Okay, welcome back. Whee! Energy! Welcome back to the channel, nerds. Uh, today, and for the next week and a half or so, we will be building two giant light fixtures. Um, I've just been calling them 1400 square, square lights, because they're squares and they're supposed to resemble something that came out of the 1400s. A uh, lovely customer found me via a PBS spot that I was featured in on local television, so that's cool. Uh, she lives up in uh, Floyd, which is a kind of town about an hour from here up in the mountains. Beautiful area. She's got a crazy house, kind of looks like a castle. Way cool, tall ceilings, wood beams in the ceiling. These lights look crazy, but they're not going to look so crazy in her space. I think they're going to be medieval and chunky and wild and mm. that's exactly what she wants so i had arden help take my chicken scratch and put it into a sort of sketch so they'll be three by three four inch wide uh quarter inch flat bar making up the the square and then they're going to be hung by logging chain the customer was very specific to request logging chain which is just chain uh, the oh, it has to be authentic. <laughs> I, and I wish I found some old chain, but I locally bought locally sourced chain from Home Depot. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna dissolve the zinc coating on this new chain to give it a patina. Mm. And she was very clear about requesting a slag and a rough finish and handmade. And I'm gonna hammer hammer all the flat surfaces to make it look like it was sort of hand forged, even though. That's, you know, not what it'll look like, but it'll look rough and rugged and old. Once that's done, it'll hang from chain, one length of chain to each corner of the light, up to a mounting plate. And then around the upper perimeter of the light, you can see there, are, is an alternating pattern of two elements. Uh, one of those elements is a uh, design shape called a fleur-de-lis. So I will cut those shapes out of steel on the plasma cutter, and those will be hand hammered as well and distressed and stuff. And then every other piece that's not a fleur de lis is going to be a light with these crazy candle bulbs. I, I don't know how much light they're gonna put out. Probably not much. Probably not much at all. I don't know though. Very orange. I mean, the other thing could be just put normal bulbs in them, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So, there will be two of these lights. The, the, the cord will just kind of weave in the chain, which is how we'll get it there. So one of the four support chains will have the cord coming down. So the first thing is, I think we should cut some of that flat bar to length. We'll do eight pieces at three foot, and then we'll start slicing the edges off with some plasma cutters. Ready? Uh, this is not an ideal bandsaw setup. <laughs> yeah. It's a this, little floppy. Yeah, th this is the one area of my shop that I like to improve. A better space for a larger horizontal bandsaw. There's one I want out there. But hey, if you're a bandsaw manufacturer out there, hit your boy up. Hey, hey, hey. Let's, let's strike a deal. Cue the montage. <laughs> Hey, that's me. <laughs> a 
Achoo! stick so mm -hmm. I've got some quarter around get the rest of it out of some plate oh it's heavy Ooh. Okay, so update. The second thing I need to do to these strips of metal is to hammer them and texture them. Uh, the customer was a little vague on that request. I've done this kind of thing in the past. In fact, I did it on that uh, pointed awning, metal awning I did for a local customer. You can click that video up here, I think. Uh, but that was 14 gauge steel. This is quarter inch plate. So I'm gonna need to either hit it harder or get it hot. So what I'm gonna do is get it hot, uh, partially due to the advice from my buddy Jed over there at Heart and Spade Forge. I've got this little Farrier's Forge here, which never had holes in the side to begin with. We cut these holes for bar stock. What I'm gonna do though is cut a rectangular hole like that, and same on the other side, so I can slide my plates in here, get a pretty large section of it hot, and then just set it here on the table, hit it with a collection of tools, I've got this round ball point hammer, I've got this uh, flatter, uh, Jed's going to kill me, I can't remember what it's called, but peen, uh, sort of a, an edge peen, and then I've even got this air chisel that I outfitted with a ball bearing on the end of a piece, uh, and I might use a combination of all of these just to impart some randomness, but I'm going to start by modifying this forge so I can slide a big piece in here. Now I modified the forge, did my test fit, this fits great, so I'm going to bring it up to temperature, um, I'm going to fire it up and we're going to walk away because there's going to be a bunch of silica in the air.
I wonder if it got any longer. Yeah, almost a quarter inch overall. Well, only seven more to go. in the shop my arm is uh, not as sore as it was at the end of yesterday uh, but we got all eight pieces distressed textured forged none of these words are applicable but uh, I do believe that with the combination of the rough cut edges with the plasma and the heating and beating with three different profiles of hammers I've achieved a look that I'm I'm pleased with and I think the customer is gonna be very pleased with as well so here's what we got. For starters, all the pieces are relatively uniform, which is great considering how random it was. I, I, after a little while, I got an idea of how to do it the same. You know, I would work a eight to 10 inch section at a time because that's all that I could heat up in the forge. So when you, when you break down your working area into something so small, it's easy to apply the same amount of work to that area. And like I said, the rough cut edge here with the plasma cutter adds that sort of third dimension to it. Uh, tried to get them all pretty flat after, you know, cause as you saw when I hit them, uh, by the time I finished working a section, the piece would be bent like crazy. So I'd flip it over and hit it flat. A few of them have a little curve in it, but for the most part they're flat. And um, because of how I'm utilizing them, I think it's gonna be fine. It's gonna look great. So now we have eight pieces and we will be making four, two boxes out of all these pieces, four pieces in each box. And that will be the body of the light. Now it's just straight up welding at this point. Uh, it's Friday, whatever I get done today, I'll get done today. And then next week, these lights will come all the way start to finish now that the foundation has been laid. So let's get to work. Okay, so back here in the office and it's time to draw these fleur-de-lis cutouts that will be welded around the perimeter of these lights. Uh, specifically these guys. So that's light, that's fleur-de-lis, light fleur-de-lis is gonna alternate like that. And the scale of which is gonna be something, something like that. Six inches for the design, a two inch extra for the tab so I can weld it and three inches wide. So I'm gonna cut over here to the computer and we're gonna figure that out. All right, so open up Fusion here. 
and see if there's any graphics that I already have for this design. This, this design element, rather. And what I'll likely do is find a graphic that I like, bring it into Fusion, set it up as a canvas, trace it, trace one side, mirror that side so they're symmetrical, and that way I have a scalable selection of curves that can be defined as a fleur-de-lis. And then I'll send to the plasma cutter, we'll cut it out of quarter-inch steel, I'll heat them, I'll hammer them, I'll distress them, just like the base fleur-de-lis. Looks like Arden has already drawn this. So that is awesome. Well, how about that? This just got a lot easier. Thanks, Arden. I need to export that. So we'll save that. We will open in route and I'll go see what type of uh, quarter inch steel I have outside. One more thing I figured I should show you guys and have to show you the concept in this way, but also have to show off the work that Arden did on CAD for this light. So she actually did a full assembly. Well, we can get a pretty good idea by looking at this, how it'll look. And I, I think, I was worried about the fleur de lis being too skinny. I think they look great here. Lots to do to these squares themselves before we even think about hanging anything. We know that hole's big enough now. And so same thing, I can go to this sketch, hit save as DXF, and we're gonna say light tab. Save that. I need 16, 16 light tabs. Okay, now to the shop. Dude, he made me experience high time. That was Walker looking up some um, SpongeBob jokes for the video, the last video that you just watched. Because time isn't real. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Got a long strip here that I could use. Might as well. What is that? Feet. So four by eight, four inches by eight feet. Let's see if I can get it all out of that. All right, so now let's lay out the parts. We're gonna define our plate that we just measured, which was four inches wide by 96 inches long. Let's see how many parts I can get out of here. I'm gonna go load that piece of metal on the machine and see if I can squeeze in some extra parts. So what I'm gonna be able to do is put all my parts that I drew so far in that one piece, but what isn't represented in in route is this extra meat here. So I'm gonna try to put some pieces out in space that will also fit in here. What I think I might do is redraw my plate this wide and just take note of how high up I can put parts. So this part down here is nine and a half by 23 and a half. So I'll put that in the computer and fit in some extra parts. That way I can get everything out of one piece. put this that's a lot of stuff out of one piece of pretty much scrap so machining output selected because we don't want to select those other two to file by plate f-l-e-u-r-d-e-l-i-s
Okay, so I'm at home and uh, I came here to do some chain soaking. So the best way I've found to remove a coating from steel is muriatic acid or in some cases vinegar. Uh, muriatic acid is typically sold at big box stores to etch concrete, but as a nice side effect of that acidity or base acidity, whatever it is, uh, it will remove zinc plating and mill scale from steel. A weird side effect of muriatic acid is as it evaporates, it will rust any metal object around it. And last time I used muriatic acid in my shop, I left it overnight, which was a mistake because when I came back the next day, every metal surface in my shop, and it, there's a lot of them because it's a metal shop, was covered in a thin layer of surface rust, which drove me crazy. I spent forever cleaning it. So I've come to my house where I can fill a bucket of muriatic acid and dunk these chains in it and leave it outside to where nothing's gonna rust. So you can see these are zinc plated. So we'll see if muriatic acid has what it takes to take the zinc plating off. Well, that's probably a good sign. So there's a lot of reaction going on. A lot of off gas, a lot of bubbles. I'm gonna not stand too close to that, but you can hear it. I'm hoping this is gonna work. Look at all this smoke. Look, it's already taking the rust off the, uh, off the bailing wire here. I'm gonna let that sit. Come back to it. All right, looks like the chemical reaction has stopped. Oh, nice. I don't know if you can tell, but that just looks like new steel now, no coating. Compare that to before, where it's really shiny. See the difference now? This is still zinc plated. That is not. That'll work nice, because now I can soak this in my blackening solution and it should blacken up to match the rest of the lights. Oh yeah, look at that. Crazy. I'm gonna let that soak again. I moved it out in the driveway because uh, apparently this stuff kills grass really fast. Who'd have thunk it? can also see how fast they might flash rust, if at all. Okay, so it flash rusted really fast. While not ideal, I'll probably have to clean that back off a little bit. But that does tell me that all of the zinc coating is gone. So um, yeah, so this is gonna go great. That blackening solution I ordered will blacken these right up, hopefully. All right, we got four chains worth, and now I'm gonna go chill, and when I go to bring this to work tomorrow, we will uh, get them ready for blackening. To the studio. All right, we're back at it, and uh, pleased with the progress I made yesterday. Got the chain all, uh, all distressed and stripped last night. Let's actually dump that out and see what that looks like. Actually got, got a little, carried away, but this black stuff will wipe off. At the very least, I can start figuring out, well, I gotta weld up the, the rest of the chandeliers, but I can start figuring out my lengths, cut all my chains to length, and then I can distress them from there. And they'll be in more manageable sections of chain at that point. But yeah, let's go back to the table and finish up the chandelier bodies.
Okay, so it's about time for me to start thinking about chain and the mounting plate. And what I'd like to do is create a, a, a thing that I can hang this chandelier from and still have it be at a workable height above my table. So you might be wondering why there's a ladder on my table. Well, I'm gonna make a five foot extension that'll bolt to the I-beam up there and then give me a plate here that will simulate the ceiling of the customer's house allowing me enough space below here for me to work on the light fixture. It'll all make sense when it comes together, but I just wanted to introduce, tell you what I'm doing, and now you can watch me do it. Here we go. to take this moment of silence to update you. So I built a support beam to clamp onto the I-beam in my ceiling, which gives me, there's four slots in it that gives me all kinds of freedom to mount uh, whatever I want, specifically chandeliers. I can have basically a fake ceiling I can hang this thing from and get a feel for what it looks like, if it's level, whatever. Um, chain cut, all right. Uh, I have yet to verify the actual total height of this thing. It's supposed to be 28. I think I'm pretty close. Uh, so my, I used my 3 8 bent pieces here, and then I used half chain links up top. Uh, and then I've got all the, everything else welded to it. So I think it looks pretty rad. Um, it's hanging, it doesn't look level but it, it's more level than it looks. And then when the blackening solution comes in, I'll soak it all and hopefully it all turns black. And then we clear coat it. I've still got to run the conduit on the inside for the wiring, but that's the last bit of metal fabrication technically to do. Uh, these will get wire wheeled before the blackening solution gets sprayed on. That uh, muriatic acid, that's the word. And now they already look like they've been sitting outside for 40 years. There we go. One is more or less mocked up. By the end of the day, I'm gonna take this one and weld all the candle mounts to it, the fleur-de-lis to it, cut some chain, make another top piece, and hope to have that one close to this one before I leave.
almost done. These, these guys are for the wires, for the lights. So uh -huh. these will help me route the wiring around. So I made these top plates. These will lag into her ceiling beam. This plate, as I've shown you, is helping me replicate the existence of the ceiling. thing I've done since the last time it was hanging was I added a full link link up here and this is an additional link because I wasn't exactly low enough so hopefully now it's lower it was an overall ceiling to bottom height of 32 oh man I don't know if you can shoot sideways and get that bada bing bada boom I'm quite pleased with that I feel better now in real time, it's Friday. I've, I've spoken to the customer. Uh, I would like to have these ready to install by mid middle of next week. And I got this stuff in the mail today. Oh. This is iron, steel, and nickel blackener. This should uh, allow me to impart a chemically, a, a chemical coating. <laughs> Warning, causes severe skin burns and eye damage, harmful if swallowed or inhaled. Oh, jeez. I had a feeling if it could turn metal black, it's probably not good <laughs> yeah. for you. <laughs> but yeah, so that's where we're at. That's what we're gonna do. Thanks for watching this episode of Lift Dark Builds. See you next time when we hang these at a castle. Whee!